Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you the basics of setting up projects for live sets in Ableton 12. You will learn how to turn a complex arrangement into a session view set and techniques of influencing the track in a live setting. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about Ableton coming up. If you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. And if you'd like to learn more about creating live sets, make sure to see the Ableton session view masterclass. All right, so let's get started. By the way, the track that we're going to be working on today is called Together Again. It's by the producer Solanka, so you can also grab it. The link will also be in the description. First of all, I'm going to play this session view set so you'll know the end result, and then we'll take a look at how to actually assemble something like this. So let's give it a quick listen. Alright, so let's get started by going into the arrangement. And here's what we have. Basically, I've reduced the track onto three 16 bar sections. Here we have an intro. The kick has some auto filtering going on, removed low end. We are not playing too much with the pluck. As you can see, the frequencies here are rolled all the way down. We're not even having the bass line. We have some drums and synths. And now here's the drop section. And then we also have an outro. This was a very complex arrangement with more than 20, 30 tracks. I've reduced them to five tracks right here. So I've left the kick, I left the main ARP instrument, and I also left the bass line, but I have basically grouped all of the drums into a single group and I grouped all of the other synths into a single group and I disabled the mastering effects and I exported just the drums group without the kick and all of the synths without the main ARP and the bass line. And we ended up with these stems. So here we just have the drum stem. As you can hear, it's just all of the hi-hats, all of the perks, and then on the synths. As you can hear, is the main pad, and then some also some background arps going on. So I did all of this to simplify the project, and so that we can also have some instruments that we can influence live. So yeah, the first instrument that we can influence live here is this pluck instrument, and the second one is the bass line. I didn't freeze and flatten the kick drum. You could do that also to save some CPU, but not necessary for me this time. This kick drum is very useful on a separate stem for our main ARP 
and the bassline because we are doing some side chaining it would be very useful to have a kick drum going on so we can side chain to that let me just delete everything we have here in the session once you have something like this set up you can obviously set up your track in a much more elaborate way you don't just have to limit yourself to three 16 bar sections you can just take everything and just drag it over like this maybe let's put it somewhere right here because we have some follow action set up here if we just now return to the session we can just play our sections as you can see the automations here they're all as it was yeah and we have all of our three sections right here so it's very very easy to take your track from the arrangement to the session so let's maybe now go through what elements we have here and first of all i wanted to talk about the follow actions because as you saw at the beginning i'm not even clicking any of these scenes here to launch and these clips and that's because we have follow actions set up to do that in Live 12, it's very easy. You just need to select a scene. For example, maybe we can take the fifth scene. You just click on the master track and you need to go to the clip view. And right here, we've got the scene. You can just enable follow actions. You can see that the play button right here turns into a striped play button. You just need to set the length of the scene. So for instance, 16 bars, or we can set it to four bars, for example, and we can set it just to next. So it will trigger the next scene. So for instance, let's just take the kick and the pluck and the kick and the pluck as well in this scene and see what this does by now. So we've triggered the next scene after four bars. And this is really awesome. Uh, we can also just click delete right here and it removes the follow action. I've done this for all of our four sections. All of these have 16 bar next follow actions. So all of this means is that every 16 bars, we just go into the next scene. And after the outro, I have the follow actions set up to stop. So it's going to stop the track after 16 bars right here. So this is really useful because I can focus on maybe modulating some of my live instruments, or you can actually play some parts and the session is going Going to flick through the scenes uh, automatically without you having to launch every scene manually. So what can we actually do uh, in a live setting if you'd like to somehow influence your track? And that's where our live instruments come in. We have the main ARP and the bass line. So what we could do, for example, in the intro section is we could maybe mess around with some of the filters on this main ARP. We have a low pass filter right here and we could just mess around with this knob to maybe open it up gradually. And in this way, you are creating some life changes. But as you can see right now, uh, we also have automations set up on all of these knobs because in the arrangement, there were already uh, some automations there. And that's really nice. We can actually take over these automations live. As you can see now, the red dot turns into a gray dot. But now if we trigger the next scene, for instance, the outro, you can see it returns to the red dot, meaning we have the automations uh, playing once again. And it's also very useful to automate some of the knobs in advance, so you don't have to manage 20 different macros live, and you can actually focus on maybe playing some parts or doing additional effects on top. Okay, so one difference I wanted to show you is the difference between modulation and automation, which is especially useful here in live sets. Take a look at this kick track. We have automation and we are automating, for instance, this auto filter. We are automating the gain, which actually goes down here. We're just going down with the gain. And we're doing something a bit different with this uh, ARP. We have modulation. It opens up very gradually. But as you can see, this triangle stays at around minus 12. First of all, you can switch between automation and modulation of the same parameter right here with this switch. 
towards the bottom of the screen if you just flick into envelopes, automation and modulation. And then the difference is when we have automations, you basically can either allow the automation to play or you can take over. There's nothing in between, right? So if we take the kick and we want to move this fader, it now will stay at minus 19 dB and we can only just return to the automation right here. But with modulation on this plug, let's play this section once again, we still have control over this knob or this fader. So even if it goes up all the way to minus 12 dB, we can still turn it down and we can make it louder. Modulation especially is very useful for adding additional things here in live sets because it doesn't lock you to all of your knob settings. You can actually modify some settings live without messing up the, the movements of the knobs. What we also have here, for example, in scene one is some automations on the auto filter, right? So you can also automate effects. And it's very easy, you just choose the effect right here, you choose the knob, or if you want to do that more easily, if we wanted to automate the LFO amount, we just click on it, go into the clip, and it should pop up right here. We can modulate, automate, do anything you want. One other thing we're doing here is automating the sense. And we have some very nice return tracks. For instance, here we have a reverb throw, a very long reverb set to eight seconds. We are doing a bit of a transition towards the end of the drop section when we go into the outro. So let's just play it and you can observe the automation of this knob, which basically sends some audio from the synth stem into the reverb, reverb throw return track. So let's just play it. So I hope you could hear the amount of reverb on this return track towards the end of this section. That was all the automation of this F send just done here in the clip and it goes into the return track and basically we get this wave of reverb towards the end and this makes for a smoother transition towards the outer section. And there are many many different types of transitions you could automate like this but it's really useful to do this with return tracks. Now there are many different approaches to doing live sets. This is a very, very basic simplified version of what can be done. You could, for example, combine this workflow with a grid style controller, for instance, the Ableton Push to control the session live. Uh, you can then launch different clips and adjust a lot of controls on the fly. You could, of course, pair this with a MIDI controller, like a keyboard style controller and play some of these sections live. A cool thing with playing live is that you could actually, for instance, uh, retain all of your automations and just remove the notes. So in some sections, you will be just able to play the MIDI keyboard and the automations and the modulations, they will be done by the software for you. So we can just focus on playing and that's really cool. So this basically turns into like a dummy clip, which has all the automations and you're just adding the MIDI in manually. You could also, for example, create a separate group of audio tracks where you could launch some extra loops, which you could mix in and out of during the live set. You could add a drum rack on a separate MIDI track, uh, which could have one shots, uh, which you could also launch, for example, from an MPC style controller. You could also, for example, control some hardware synths by choosing the external instrument device in Ableton and sending out some MIDI and automations into a hardware synth, for example. Or you can use an external audio effect to maybe use a special reverb device on a return track or anywhere else in the project. Another approach towards creating live sets is really nicely explained in a video by Felix Raphael, which is also available on our channel. So make sure to see that one. I will also put a link to that in the description. All right, I hope you will find this video on creating live sets useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the Beginner to Advanced Live 12 
12 start to finish course. And if you'd like to learn more about creating live sets, make sure to see the Ableton Session View Masterclass. All links will be in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, write a comment, and I will see you in the next ones.